Welcome to the Touching Into Presence podcast. This podcast is for people who are interested in body work, empowerment, and somatic based practices. I am Nikki Olson. I'm Andrew Rosenstock. We are certified Rolfers. Collectively, we're trained in various movement and bodywork therapies with an emphasis on somatic awareness and client resilience. Through conversations, our goal is to share and explore mind body paradigms to offer empowerment possibilities. It was such a pleasure to be in conversation with Hiroshi Tahata. Hiro has worked as a rolfer since 1998. He joined the Rolf Movement faculty of the Rolf Institute in 2009. He brings to this work a depth of creativity and understanding that integrates the principles of structure and function through a gentle and non-invasive approach to transformation. His background in biochemistry clearly bridges the inquiry between science and art. The essence of The Art of Yield came out of his collaboration with his mentor, Carol Agnesens. With the support of his mentor and much clinical research with his clients, Hero found a way to incorporate The Art of Yield into the 10 series of Rolfing. In collaboration with Yojiro Katayama, the originator of Migama Sate, Hiro continues to explore the art of incorporating the Japanese concept of Ma. His latest work uses Ma to promote a profound experience in a physical geometrical balance. Hiro provides Rolf movement certification programs and continues to study and teach spatial somatics and the art of yield with his colleagues internationally. In today's conversation, we spoke about Hiro's path to today, what yield is to Hiro and me safety and spatial awareness. I share a story of my experience of receiving Hero's work and a moment of closure in Hero's mother tongue and the difference of embodied speech. This was a very enjoyable conversation uh, to me as we were navigating language differences, language processing time relations, and cultural relations towards speaking. I had to be in a very different relation to how I spoke and listened to Hero. And this was really a gift for me and a reminder of how to be in space with someone. So thank you for that, Hero. Because of the importance of space here, I purposely left more of the space between speakers in than I usually do when I edit, as I felt it was very important to to get a sense of Hero and his approach. This episode will have a different tempo than others, and we hope that this brings another type of experience for you as well. So with that, let's begin our talk. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hero. Hi, Andrew. Nice to I see you. you. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you for taking time for your, from your work day to be with us. My, my pleasure. Thank you for uh, finding the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we are, um, we're, we're, I think we're both glad to, to be in conversation with you. You are our, f- uh, I think you're our first well, a Japanese guest. And also, I mean, we've had your, we've had guests where we've called, Europeans. I don't, I'm trying to remember if we've had anyone where we've spoken to in Asia and it's exciting Mm -hmm. to have, uh, it it makes juggling the time zones really fun, but it's also, it's really nice to have another, um, piece of the puzzle uh, of humanity (laughs) because Mm -hmm. the culture is going to be a little bit different and how we relate with people is partly on culture. So I'm, very excited to to have you and, and to share you with people because I've you know you and I have had emails and calls and I just I think you're wonderful and I think you have something very interesting to offer so I'm excited to have you here. Thank you, thank you, Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess for the, for those who are listening, they're going to get the the fun. Um, besides the, the delay in data traveling across the world and then coming back, we also have the, the communication delay in regards to we, we speak different languages. And so there's going to be a mm-hmm. translation part, which is I'm really excited about because um, uh, well, we haven't really had it. And I also I just I like culture and I like language. So I'm excited for that. So. There's so many places to start, uh, but I guess for, for, for one of the things we like to do is kind of let our guests lead. So is there, is there some place in particular that you want to start? Maybe you want to talk about yourself or do you want to talk about this, this 
aspect of yield or ma or this this other thing that you did with me the other night that I still don't know the name of? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so do you want to introduce uh, my, uh, myself first? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you? I, I'll do a pre. I'll do a little bit pre introduction before when when we're done, and I'll talk a little bit about you. But why don't you talk to us a little bit about you? Give us a little introduction to uh, you know who you are and and what you do. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Um, I am uh, certified. Uh, uh, Advanced Rofer and uh, uh, Rolf Movement faculty member. Uh, I was certified uh, as a Rolfer in 1998. And in 1999, I was certified Rolf Movement uh, uh, practitioner. Before uh, Rolfing uh, practice, I was a uh, a research worker uh, of the Japanese biotech company. My project uh, was to find uh, megakaryocyte, megakaryocyte potentiating uh, activity and also involved in by digital O-ring test, which is uh, uh, alternative me medicine uh, Dr. Omra found uh, the method. Uh, uh, it was a very interesting uh, project. So uh, I encountered the people uh, cured uh, the cancer or uh, to very severe symptom. By the diagnosis of by digital rolling test. So, and then, uh, my interesting is move to the more somatic practice. So, because, uh, I experienced, uh, the roving, uh, uh, roving, uh, structural integration. Mm. So then uh, I uh, resigned that uh, job. Then, so uh, my movement training was so impressive uh, because uh, uh, the teacher was uh, Carol Agnesons and Rebecca Curry Mills. They introduced me the fundamental action of yield, which is a, a, a develop a, one of the developmental uh, movement, and also it was in the very safe environment uh, which they created. So uh, I understand uh, it was uh, so much important in the, uh, the field of the safe and then uh, yielding experience uh, become more meaningful. So I appreciate their uh, contrib contribution, or, yeah. And then I start exploring uh, the movement of yield, so which is a key to transform and retrieve the integrity of the human structure and function. So I'm I've been uh, still continue to explore the movement of yield. And also, I'm interested in uh, creating this uh, very deep, safe, uh, uh, safe field, uh, safe surrounding 
Uh, would you mind uh, de- defining, how would you define yield? How would you, like, uh, if someone's never heard that word or, like, how would you describe it? Uh, so, uh, in the first opportunity, uh, uh, I haven't never uh, heard about yielding before the movement training. And uh, it was a uh, uh, experiential and uh, also for me, the yield is uh, uh, looks like an event of the um, uh, cell uh, cell growth. So when uh, the cell is growing and developed, uh, the yielding is important to support the cell uh, uh, by mechanotransduction and uh, uh, more um, uh, liquid uh, hormonal uh, stimulation. But the uh, mechanical transduction uh, needs to stimulate the growth of the cell. Here, I'll, I'll cut for a second just because one of the things you and I spoke about before was you know, there was maybe a hesitation for you with the translation, but I have to say you're doing so great with your, not only are you speaking you know, like great English, but you're bringing things like mechano transduction in and it's, it's, it's kind of making me, me, me laugh a little bit because of our talk before. But I was, I was thinking maybe in, in as a, cause I just spoke with you about maybe being sort of an intermediary translator of, of sorts that maybe the easiest way and correct me if I'm wrong, but the easiest way to describe it would be to, to feel it or to, to be in, in relation with yield. And mm-hmm. one of the things I'm, I'm noticing while you speak is, uh, and this maybe will help kind of go into yield a little more, uh, from a less of a, a neural way, but more of a felt way, which is mm-hmm. normally when we have our guests on, because we're in more of the same language, it is a lot of, you know, so much more. And, and I'm able to almost be really there, but with you, it has a different speed. And that's actually, as I'm listening to you, it's, it's, there's a part of me that wants to move forward, that wants to has this pattern of, of 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 going forward, but instead I I I sit back and I and I yield and I I find my feet and I find my I let myself be here to actually take your information in, so that I'm mm-hmm. I'm yielding into the space. I'm allowing myself not to not to be too far ahead of myself and not to be um, you know resisting or even lackadaisical or non but i'm i'm in this space in a in a a allowance with it neither pushing nor surrendering but yielding into it so that i can hear your words take them in and it's it's complicated for me i really want to i get so excited during these talks and so there is this beautiful practice that you're even giving me of how can i just yield here. So I, I don't know if that helps describe it in a way as well, but I'm attempting to. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for understanding <laughs> the way of uh, uh, talking about. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, because because part of it is, as from my understanding and from talking with you, Part of the process of yielding is is a is a feeling sense, um, and although we need the words to describe it, um, and that is helpful. And hopefully, I'm hoping Nikki that some of what I did and some of what Hero did is helpful. Um, but that when we're in that state of yield, it is presence, right? 
Well, yeah, I think it echoes a lot of what we, you know, we'll probably get further into this as we're talking, but that is a big part of the work is coming to contact with the person, the human with us in our practice and making contact whether we have an attention of what we want to do, what, how we're going to try to work with the fascia, there is a sense of yield. So you're present to listen. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, you, Hero, has a very interesting way of working. I mean, when you're working in this yield medium, are you mm-hmm. hands off? Or are you touching your client? Are you both? How do how do you utilize this in your practice? Yeah, both. Because uh, uh, the body's uh, si- system uh, recognize this uh, the surrounding as a safe. The system uh, can. And allow itself to yield into the matrix, and and also that uh, touch uh, uh, facilitate to yield uh, touch uh, function uh, can function as a scaffolding. Body begins to uh, yield in. Yield and then the body also recognize the surrounding is a safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something you and I have talked about. Is that to some extent, in order for there to be a yield, there needs to be safety. Otherwise, there is a resistance towards whatever is perceived as non-safe. And the, mm-hmm. the aspect of bringing more and more safety, however that is defined or recognized in, is seems like a necessity to allow or to work with a yielding process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, t- so tell us, but, yeah, so, sorry, tell us a little more. Mm-hmm. So before the system recognize, uh, uh, before the system, body system start yielding, uh, the practitioner uh, have to wait uh, before touch and wait uh, until the system uh, has uh, some level of coherency. And then uh, body can uh, absorb the intervention. So we we have to uh, wait. And then body system uh, when the body system invite us to uh, invite us, and then we we can address. Uh, some uh, some parts or some restriction, but it's, it's more important to wait to create safe environment and also the body system uh, got uh, more coherent uh, in that uh, space. So after yielding uh, the body yielding into the massage table and then uh, the body starts to decompress the whole body and start to uh, release and make more space in um, uh, less space uh, inside the body. Making space inside, it's uh, important to uh, integrate before uh, correcting something or releasing something. So body knows 
how to how it goes. This conversation, well, I, I'm appreciating um, how we're talking about the, how yielding and making the body feel safe, and it's also kind of you know bringing awareness to a greater heightened sense of who we are and where we are in space. And with that, you then are kind of also kind of feeling into, you know, your greater surroundings. And I just keep, I, and I don't know why. I mean, I guess I kind of do, but what what's cool about this conversation is I keep on coming back to the original interest that Dr. Ida Rolf had with Rolfing um, for the human potential movement. So while we're having this conversation, I'm thinking about like why, how Dr. Ida Rolf created this and kind of why, but you know, historically it was very much sure there is a yielding, but the yielding looked very different. I think than what we're talking about right now, the yielding was very much, kind of pushing into the tissue, hence why Rolfing kind of has the the reputation of being painful. And um, while that served a purpose and, you know, great work and great minds, you know, have, have, have come from that, from that time of um, history. I'm just, I'm again, I'm just appreciating how this level of touch is coming into our work because Andrew and I have had a couple conversations with other people who are either meeting structural integration with kind of, kind of with a yielding flavor. I think every, like you kind of have your own approach. Um, Source Point has a, an approach. We just had a conversation with, a fellow named Matthew who had to find a way to work, who became quadriplegic um, midway in his rolfing career. And just the beauty. And again, you know, a lot of us practitioners, rolfers, structural integrators, a lot of us people who are in the touch business had to figure out a way to connect with their clients during this pandemic where, you know, you know, it was a terrible time to be in the touch business. And but still yet we found ways to still cultivate ways to be in dialogue with each other and to support, you know, support structural integration. Mm -hmm. So I I'm just I'm loving this conversation about yielding and how it can translate in, in different ways of our in our practice. Okay, in, in Chinese medicine, uh, there are uh, five types of the body tendency. So, uh, one type of the, uh, one type has a uh, tendency of weakness of lung. And also, that type has a very sensitive uh, pressure of touch. And so, uh, for the people, uh, to work, uh, for the people, uh, practitioner has to uh, pay attention to the pressure of, pressure of touch because uh, they are very sensitive. So, uh, especially for that type of the clients, we, uh, the yielding, uh, intervention uh, would be helpful and effective to uh, the uh, uh, to the practice. So, uh, but other type of the uh, for other type of the client, we don't uh, have to so much care about that, and also. Uh, classical type of the roofing or structural integration uh, can um, literally uh, trans uh, facilitate to transform them. But uh, for uh, some type of the client, uh, uh, classical type of uh, with uh, deep pressure or 
painful touch uh, would uh, would not affect uh, change uh, efficiently. So and, and also uh, I am a very uh, a sensitive person uh, to the pressure of touch. So I uh, wanted to um, find find a way of intervention without uh, deep without deep pressure uh, uh, intense pressure. So I was uh, searching for uh, the way and. So to explore the establish the safe environment, uh, so I realized that if the body system can recognize the uh, the space as a safe, then they uh, the system uh, uh, spontaneously. Start integrate and uh, reorganize, mm. and, uh, it, which is uh, uh, sometimes need uh, touch intervention, sometimes uh, without touch intervention. It happens. So the key is to create uh, and uh, refine. Uh, safe uh, create the safe environment in the session room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, when a fellow Japanese um, person, uh, I apologize if I say the last name wrong, but again, you're, 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 this conversation keeps on making me think of like just things of that I've came across of in the past. But Doctor Doctor Emoto, who <laughs> Dr. Emoto, who was a Japanese researcher, he's the guy who discovered well, uh, talking kindly to water, how the, mm -hmm. the water molecules changed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yes. The, the, there was a movie. I can't think of the movie right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's coming back to like the yielding, the yielding the way we are with our clients is giving this kind communication to the to the ability of our molecular our molecule body the chemistry to be able to change in a favorable way uh-huh yeah uh the practitioner's perception is a, a very important uh very crucial uh uh in the in the session mm -hmm. so yeah, it's a uh, 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 to, I'm not, I'm to, looking. to create the uh, safe environment in the session session room. Uh, the pr practitioner uh, also feel the safe uh, in that room before intervention. So the positioning is very important between uh, the client and the practitioner. So when the practitioner finds some uh, suitable standing position, the field will change and condition into the uh, more safe, more, more silent, uh, or no wind uh, circumstances. This is a key of uh, my practice to find a, before intervention, uh, we have to uh, find the suitable standing point in between the clients and the practitioner. And then uh, uh, that place is uh, mm, very flat and a very uh, neutral place. 
So uh, after after waiting for a while, the field uh, would be would change into more mm, settling down and uh, calm, and then body system uh, recognize. Uh, uh, the space as a safe uh, in very uh, deep level of si silence. Hiro, if I can ask, just for, for clarification, when you say before intervention, mm -hmm. do you mean, um, like, if I was coming to see you, before I even come into this, become into the building, you have already created or you've already geolocated or what exactly it is? Or is it once we, once I'm in the room and on the table, then you are, um, you know, orienting to your space? Cause I'm, cause I, I could see the intervention being, uh, I'm curious when that intervention is seen as beginning for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, when we contact with the client in email, the process uh, yeah already started. Yeah, and uh, it is uh, with uh, under conscious, subconscious level. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And and when do you then start to for your process, when do you start to orient to the, hmm. to the, to the space or you had another word for it? I'm, I'm forgetting, but when, it, when let, let's say, okay, I've emailed you and we're hmm. going, you know, so now the process is, cause we've created a, a, a connection at that point and the process is starting to unfold until however it's unfolding. Mm -hmm. When it, when is it that you are then, working with the space? Is it after you get an email? Is it before I come into the room? Or is it when I'm in the room or something else? Ah. Actually, I mm, eh, noticed uh, after the client coming into my office and then uh, in my consciousness, uh, I start to intervene. intervene to the client. Before that uh, more unconscious level uh, process. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, because I took away for a second, so if you'd want to sort of share some more, because um, for, for me, what I'm, what I'm curious about, and, and we might not, we might not have to talk, talk necessarily about it, but I am curious about this, the, the way you've got the person yielding and you are orienting to, to, to space around them in, in some way. Um, uh, I'm curious to hear a little more if, if you can. Uh, yeah, to find a standing position. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. That, what, you know, cause especially for the people listening, they might not even know what exactly the standing position is. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To find a suitable first standing position, uh, I monitor. I'm monitoring uh, the sense of my uh, hara around the belly. So when I uh, find and stay at the a suitable standing position. Uh, my sense is uh, the sensation is gathering into my hara, and also uh, then I also feel the surrounding space. The direction is into the uh, some specific point into the hara, and then also be aware of the surrounding. Two uh, yeah, parantonic uh, 
pantonicity in the per uh, spatial perception. So, so to uh, after establishing the state of the uh, uh, that state, and then the uh, body feels a practitioner of body feels more safe and uh, uh, begins to yield into the uh, standing point more. And then also the client uh, body system recognize and uh, begins to resonate each other. And the mutual resonating helps to uh, create more specific uh, deep uh, field in the session. Hmm. Yeah, and the way uh, I'm trying to find the right way to word this, um, you you do this both as a, uh, I guess you could say a general session someone's coming in for something but you also you you do this for the 10 mm -hmm. series correct mm -hmm. yes so you, you would you would have this if somebody came in you would maybe be working them this way through one through two through three up to 10 mm -hmm. each yeah correct mm -hmm. that's um I don't, there's a part of me that's really curious how that is, but there's another part of me that thinks that's going to bore many people we're listening to. <laughs> or, <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, yeah. I mean, Nikki, what do you think about, I, I, I don't, yeah, about that? Well, I don't know about boring, but I think it would, it, that, that would, uh, require probably a workshop. But I think what would be, a little bit interesting to hear is like so you what you're speaking of it's for sure part of the training but it seems like you really ran with it so what what influence or drive what is it that influenced you to take your work more in this direction so there's a lot of, you know, structural integration, practitioners, rolfers. We go through the training and sometimes some of us kind of stick with what the training is or we kind of, you know, change up things by the influence that we have from continued education classes that we take. So some people might be more cranial, sacral, more nerve or visceral. And, um, so yeah, I'm just curious what, what influenced you to really incorporate this into your practice? Because you're a teacher, you teach for the European Rolf Institute or Dr. Ida Rolf Institute, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, so I'm, yeah, I just would love to hear a little bit more of your influence and in, what really motivated you to incorporate this type of touch? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, so, yeah. Uh, so, Carol Anderson's uh, presence and the teaching uh, really affect me. And also, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, session with uh, BB and J, uh, Rolf Movement faculty member, uh, she passed away in the uh, uh, last few years. Uh, uh, she, uh, I had a chance to uh, uh, the session with her, and my uh, shoulder guard was uh, imbalanced and. But after the just one short session, so my uh, humerus uh, uh, suddenly go back into the uh, um, suitable position. Mm. 
uh, with some cracking of, uh, noise. It was very drastic change. Mm. So I felt a uh, um, great possibilities to uh, of movement work. So without uh, tissue release or uh, myofascial release technique, mm. I'm more curious about uh, movement. And also uh, during the movement class, uh, the Carol uh, Agnison uh, was holding my cr cranium and then my cranium uh, started to decompress uh, spontaneously. Yeah. And it, it is very impressive and uh, I was touched with her uh, Mm, presence. So, and my curiosity moves to more uh, gentle and uh, more movement oriented work rather than my official uh, release technique based on the basic role thing. So, uh, yeah, also, uh, uh, I have a, 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 mm, a, I have uh, collaborated with the Japanese uh, body worker Yojiro Katayama. Uh, uh, he's he's uh, a, a, mm, much uh, uh, he has a, a special perception with the space. And his intervention uh, from the space without touch uh, often. So we collaborate uh, the workshop and then I uh, uh, was influenced with his, uh, his intervention. Mm. By the way, yeah. Hiro, I want to thank you because you, you, did, you, you did something. I think you're the first person to actually do this accidentally or but our you mentioned when about carol you mentioned how you were touched with her presence and the name of our podcast is touching into presence uh which has numerous meanings uh but i i, I want to thank you for um accidentally maybe accidentally giving a shout out to our name within uh within the actual talk um <laughs> And, and, you know, we, we've had Carol on and I, I, I spoke to you. I want to have her on again. I'd like to talk with her some more about various things, but she is such a, for me, and it sounds like for you, she's such a, a gift to our community. She is so, so talented and knowledgeable and, right. um, and, and, for people who haven't had a chance to uh, either read her book or take classes, she does teach. And I think she's preparing to teach some more and classes with her. And also, I know that she did a class with you recently, although you had to come from Zoom, but that she, you and her are doing stuff together. So um, at the end, we'll share some more. Uh, we'll, we'll share your your link or information so that people can also find out more. Because in some ways... This talk is really just an appetizer, mm -hmm. or maybe an amuse bouche, <laughs> uh, just a taste. Yeah, I know. Her uh, Carol's uh, presence is a um, very special for me. So uh, her teaching and her presence encourages a student and. and uh, her ability of empowerment is so wonderful. So the practitioner uh, has a perception or consciousness to help the people uh, from the deep inside. So the uh, created field of the session would be uh, conditioned and uh, to to be created as a uh, transformative uh, matrix. 
So it's, it's not about the technical way, but、uh, it's a key. So I,、uh, would like to explore more about to deepen, deepening,、uh, the field of the session room. So then, uh, after creating that space, the body, uh, can transform spontaneously,、uh, according to the、uh, body intelligence or body, uh,、mm, inherent, uh, Organizing system or self or self regulatory system. So, so, so I, I would like to emphasize that con- condition、uh, before, before touch intervention.、Uh, here, here, out of curiosity, have you studied much? Are you familiar much with like osteopathy and? Do the,、um, any of Sutherland or Becker's work? Because a lot of what you're saying there references is that there are these inherent mechanisms in the body and there are these, these movements and respirations. I'm just curious if you've, you've studied that and you've brought that in or if you happen to figure that out by yourself. Yeah. I, uh, it, I learned from, uh, Liz Gagini and,、uh, Uh, DDA Pratt, uh, uh, and the class of,、uh, visceral manipulation. And those class, uh, they are talking about, uh, inherent motion of each organ. So, yeah, that was,、uh, very helpful to understand, uh, each organ has, a、uh, inherent motion or, uh, and, uh, Mm. Also, the, the other old tissue has a, a motor response. But I, I think,、um, for me, it, it was important to,、uh, stop learning from others. So after, uh, Mm. My son was born, so I could not, uh, uh, continue, continue to, uh, uh, go abroad, uh, go abroad to, uh, take the class of, uh, take the continuing education class. So then, uh, I, uh, So I more,、uh, it was a time to,、um, find, find the resource inside, not from the、uh, outside information. And also,、uh, when Carol Agnison's,、uh, came to, Japan to teach the road movement training. And she, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, assisted the class in Japan,、uh, in 2005 and 2007. So Carol,、uh, asked me to co-teach more. So then I,、uh, tried to find,、uh, my own way to, to teach something. So it was, uh, uh she gave me the great opportunity to, uh, uh, explore more about, uh,、um, About the,、mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, so, she, she's yeah. so, she's really wonderful. I can just see her in that, that she's 
in a way, having you find your own words and your own definitions and your own way of, of explaining and being with this work. And it's just really wonderful that not a lot of teachers will do that, but she, she's so supportive and empowering that mm-hmm. she could do that. And, and I'm sure she could see like a, like you may have felt like a seed, but she could see the flower coming out of the seed and, and nurturing the conditions so that mm-hmm. hero, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's a key, uh, yet up to some level of uh, learning. So we have to stop learning from other teachers. Then we can address uh, in our own uh, resource. Amen. <laughs> no, but I, I, I love that because you um it's like what i was hearing is the birth of your son gave you an opportunity to birth your own method right right yeah yeah i can i can relate to that as a mom of two kids so mm-hmm. um that's lovely hero for both of us because we do, uh, we're always in this sense of of a dance of wanting more and also being limited by time and mm-hmm. schedules and children and whatnot. Um, and so I'm curious uh, because in in some in some way we have said so much, and in some way we've we've just just touched the surface of of you and what this is. Uh, and it, it, it might be that there later should be another call. Um, but um, at this point, if we were getting to a place of, um, well, let's use Rolfing talk. If we were getting to a place of closure at this point, what would, what would it be for you to start to bring us into that closure here? Uh, and does it feel like a time for closure? Yeah, I'm too close. <laughs> so, so what? What does that? What is for you? The in this case, well, in this case, both the client and the practitioner, I guess. What What is needed? Or what What would be liked for you with what we have today to bring us to closure? Is there stuff you want to share more? Is there Is there a practice? What What, what does closure seem like to you in this moment? So now I'm feeling, uh, I feel now very concentrated and feel safe in my room. So the uh, audience, audience are uh, listener may feel something. <laughs> so I, um, some, uh, I provide the remote session, uh, over Zoom sometimes. So, um, the particip- participants, uh, uh, feel and uh, um, allow themselves to yield into the uh, floor in their own room. And I hope uh, the, uh, the some uh, participants told me uh, she uh, watched and listened the recorded uh, uh, Recording, so she felt uh, yielding. Uh, yeah, I mean, I if I can share just in, in echoing because you and I did something together. You you gave me a session, and and I and I I had a very profound experience where I and I mentioned this with you where I 
started to recognize that I was mildly dissociating or, or hovering above my body. And so then I brought a grounding practice that I was familiar with of just sensing my body of yielding into the ground. And I had it that I was in both states for a little while until they slowly came together. And when mm. they came together, it was a deeply embodied, uh, a very healing uh, um, place. It was, and there was an integration that proceeded for a while afterwards. I mean, I went to bed because it was late, um, but it was a very profound uh, experience and a very helpful experience. And so I will uh, recommend and, and that the, the, the idea for people, and, and we can, we'll have contact information that if people do want to contact you, they can. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm, I think it's enough to feel some, uh, field and some uh, experience with this conversation. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, great. And I wanted to invite you to anything you want to say in Japanese for our Japanese um, speakers and listeners. There must be something if there's if there's something you want to say in your own language, just okay. to to create your own closure. And mm -hmm. because I could imagine this could be a little hard to kind of share your practice in a different language. I mean, my goodness, I can barely, I can barely speak English. So, no, no, no. <laughs> so, but I, I, I could imagine that would feel really like really nice just to kind of share in your own native language and just kind of create your own closure. So feel free to, to speak. Your mind in Japanese. Okay. Uh, ah, today, ah, no, everyone, listen to me. Thank you. I was very disappointed in English, but I think this feeling of not speaking English to everyone, and also to the listeners, if there is something that can be transmitted, I think that's good. I あの、ひどい英語で申し訳ありませんでした。Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you also <laughs> said something like Nikki and Andrew are so awesome and they're just the best. <laughs> well, I, I, what I'm going to recommend for people to do as well, and this will be, this is something that I've been working on because I have, I have the luck of getting to travel a lot and work in different cultures is to have people Listen back and hear, hear hero speaking the, the, the mother tongue, the comfortable, the effortless tongue, and then hear the translation. Because what I've noticed is when we, when we are going to a second language, it is, it's not a natural. It is a, it is a, um, for some, for Europeans where you grow up necessarily with four languages, it's a little different, but for most, it's there's a difference when we speak a another tongue, and I think it's really fascinating. And so I'm really also happy that Nikki came up with that idea because we get to really hear hero. We get to really get the essence of hero as a as a fluid uh, a fluid being, which is what our our native tongue allows us to do. So thank you for that, Nikki, and and thank you, hero, for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Arigato, arigato, Hiro-san. Yeah. I appreciate you are a very um, resonating mm. listening. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sugoi. Sugoi. I feel, yeah, I feel that. Mm. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you two talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
ちょっと、ちょっと日本ですかちょっと日本ですかちょっと日本でした。Right? 日本でした。はい。すごい。はい。すごいです。<笑> That's me flexing my, my language skills. <笑>、uh, well, with, with that, it's bedtime. It's getting close to bedtime here. So I can say for me, Oya Saminasai. Although for you, it's not, it's not Oya Saminasai for, for either of you. It's not, it's not good night、uh, for either of you, but for our sweet dreams. But for me, it is.、Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I want to thank you, Hiro, for,、um, for you and for the time.、Um, it is really grateful to, to have this for so many ways. And, and again, one way is it's really, I'm just noticing the, the need for me to be more back and more yielding and more、mm-hmm. slow. And it's one of the things when I, when I listen to my, when I edit the podcast, I get so excited. And so I'm, you know, very, and I can't do that here. And it's such a gift.、Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. That's why、uh, that is the sensation of the first standing position in the session room. I, know, I hope、uh, the listener to find their own standing position. So. Then、uh, the sensation comes to you、um, as Andrew san、uh, talking about. Thank you. 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 Thank you for listening to us at Touching Into Presence. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation. You can find out more about Hero at rawfinger.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd appreciate if you'd leave a positive review of the podcast and subscribe to it through the platform of your choice. When you do this, it really helps other people find us, and we greatly appreciate your support. We look forward to hearing back from you and seeing you on our next conversation at Touching into Presence. Bye for now. <laughs>